Well, I got so tired playing goat carrying wire up and down the mountains. When somebody said there's a new Superman outfit being organized, they called Paratroop. And they make $50 extra a month just for jumping out of airplanes. And so I said, you know, at 25 cents an hour in this business, well, that sounds like good to me. So I went down to company headquarters, signed up for paratroops, and uh, was immediately taken, uh, sent to Fort Benning, Georgia. I saw this bullet and they offer me 50 bucks more a month <laughs> to what the people they were born. That's what interested me. Yeah. Well, if I'm going to be in uniform, I'm going to earn some more money. So I signed up a form within, after I finished my training in uh, Buckley Field. There, I received my orders to report to Fort Benning. So after, after X number of weeks of training and marching and shooting and jumping, <clears throat> we head for France. The time, 2200 hours, June 5th, 1944. The place, England. C-47s in their new invasion battle paints stand waiting. We go to the airport on the night of June 5, 1944. And there are thousands of planes now loaded with paratroopers. British and American, Canadian. We're loaded with all sorts of gear. I think we figured we had, with counting the weight of the parachute, about a hundred pounds. It was difficult to get in the aircraft. We had to have help to get into the aircraft. So we're nervous, excited, frightened, knowing now we're going to France, spearhead the invasion of Europe. Well, those kinds of situations, physical conditions, tend to have effect on an individual. And so numbered of, numbers of us had to be lit down, leave the plane, and look for a retreat. But when we got into the airplane, we were scared. I thought, thought what the heck did I get myself into? But going to the German lines, the beach, they started with any aircraft guns, Jesus. Then the airplane went down from 400 to 300 feet to avoid the flag exploding higher. And the sky is full of flat and full of, uh, of sh shell or billets coming up, you know. And then one of them, when a tracer, you know there's about 20 more in between. I seen them go through my chute, but it's all fast. And then you're heading for the ground and you're not in the air very long. If you ever go to a fireworks display and at the end they have a lot left over and they throw it all up one time and they bang well that's what it looked like when you went out the door and your feet was in there and you had bullets going well they were going through your chute and you're lucky if you weren't hit. So uh, We lost a lot of men. It was like the 4th of July, planes were coming in, you'd hear one crash, and then everything would light up, uh, if it was, and there was a lot of machine gun fire going up toward the planes because they were coming in at low levels, and as they jumped out, they'd aim toward the, the door by which we were exiting the plane, and uh, my plane uh, dropped us at 300 feet to shoot. By the time it fully opens, you're about 100 feet from the ground. So you're coming in hard, uh, and it's a hard landing, uh, but we were accustomed to it. When a parachute unit jumps at night, is the fact that you get separated immediately, uh, depending on the wind, how fast the plane is going, determines how far it is between each person that jumps out. Usually you hit the ground and you're all by yourself. There's other people all around you, but you don't see them yet. We finally got down to the bridges and we held them, and then a few more people come in. And uh, <clears throat> you heard about lost patrols and all. Well, they didn't know we had taken our objective for four days because we were cut off. So we just held uh, and uh, waited till the lighter troops and the other troops caught up with us. 
Then we assembled back with our headquarters again. And then we marched on the town of Carantan. We took Carantan.